Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us today here. Uh, before we get started, we have a couple of questions we'd like to, to ask you today. How many of you set the requests in your Kubernetes workloads? OK, nice. How many of you know people that doesn't do it? Yeah, we all know people. I think one of them, though, so it's no big deal. And how many of you set sometimes higher requests just in case? Because you want your application to run smoothly. You don't want, you don't want problems. There's a deadline. You don't want surprises. OK, so we might have some greedy, greedy developers here. Uh, my name is uh, Jesus. And my name is David. We work at Sysdig. We help our customers understand their Kubernetes clusters. And we are also the maintainers of Promcat.io, which is an open source project that gives you a curated lists of Prometheus exporters that are just ready to go. You can go there, search for the technology that you want to monitor, and it's very straightforward. It, it helps you configuring your Prometheus jobs, your exporter, etc. So there is a problem with the grid developers, right? And we, what happens here is that knowing the exact amount of resources that your application needs to use is a really complicated matter, right? So we, we don't normally know how to do it. So in this talk, we are going to, to show you guys how we uh, right-size the requests of our clusters for a lot of benefits that, that we'll discuss later. So first, normally, a grid developer uh, will set higher limits and higher requests. So what happens when you uh, set higher limits? Uh, well, first, if you set lower limits, you might kill your application. Your CPU might throttle. You, you might have some pods kills by the out of memory. But on the other hand, if you, ha if you set too high limits, you might be starving other applications in the cluster if the usage rises, right? Something really similar happens with requests. If you set low requests, it's the same, right? CPU throttling, uh, memory kills. But if you set higher requests, at first, your application runs smoothly. But you might be doing uh, harder for Kubernetes to allocate more pods. And also, you're wasting a lot of resources. You are buying for more CPU and memory that you want to use. So, so you, are, you, you might be wasting some money, right? But Jesus, let's explain first what are the limits. OK, let, let's do a quick recap. What are the limits? OK, the limits are the amount of the maximum uh, amount of resources that your application can use. But these uh, resources are not guaranteed. This resource depends on the available resource that the node has. And what are the requests? The requests are the minimum resources that the application uh, have reserves. So how is that in a real scenario? Yeah, well, for this presentation, we are going to right-size a real application. Well, not real as in real, but this application existed in, a, in an actual cluster. So. Uh, we, we have uh, set uh, one gigabyte and one, co and one core CPU for the limits and the same for the requests. And we are going to start from here, OK? Of course, right now, the application runs perfectly. Uh, this is how we, if, if, if we, if we uh, take a look at, at our dashboard, this is how we see. We see four gigabyte in one line. Why is this? Because we have four pods, we have four replicas for our workload, so we have four gigabytes of, of memory. And why there is just one line? Because we have the same limits and requests, so in the chart it's the same, okay? So before we start, we need some theory first. So we need to explain what is our QoS classes. Quality of service depends on the memory or request that you set in your workloads. If you set the same amount of requests and limits, you will have a QAS of guarantee. That means that your pods will be the last of, of, of all pods evicted. 
if you set the limits and the requests, but the limits are not the same, uh, then you will have a QoS of uh, bootstrapper. That means that you put maybe or might be evicted. And if you don't set limits or requests at all, then you pod will be tested for. So that kind of pods will be evicted the first. Okay, so let's put it an example here. If you have one pod, your application runs in one pod, for example, a database, it does is just one stateful set. You don't want by any means that that pod gets evicted, right? You don't want your database to be down. You just have one pod. So the strategy here is obvious. You need to set the same limits and requests. So if Kubernetes have, has problems, your database will be the last pod that, that, that the cluster will evict. But sometimes you need to optimize your limits and requests. And maybe, maybe there are applications that you can take some risk. For example, an API gateway. If you have an API gateway, you have, say, 10 pods, 10 Nginx pods. And if two pods are evicted, it's not a big deal. We'll talk more about this later, but you can take the risk because the benefits are a most uh, efficient, more optimized limits and requests, okay? So you could go with the portable strategy here. And the best effort, well, I don't know. Any non-critical application, uh, I guess, uh, it depends on the, on, on, on the use case. So we're talking about that some pods can be evicted. So, if Kubernetes evicts your pod, is it such a big deal? No, it's not a big deal. Actually, if your application is running in multiple pods, or, or you don't have just a single pod, it's, it's normal. I, I mean, Kubernetes works like that. It's the natural thing in Kubernetes. And after any change you do in the, in the request or in the limits of a workload, the scheduler will try to arrange your pods so it will be a bit there. So don't worry about where your pod is. Okay. So normally, usually, setting limits and requests is a good idea. Yeah. Okay. Before talking about how to right size your request, let's see how we should be setting our limits, the strategies. How, 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 can, how can we do it? For limit uh, right size, we can use two strategies. The first one is the conservative. That uh, means that we trust more in the requests than the limits. So uh, in this case, uh, for example, a database that has uh, several pods, we want to uh, assure that we are using uh, the requests more than the limits. And that way, we will have enough room to, to move it. And in the other hand, well, in, that, in that one, we could use like 25% more than uh, the request. And in the other hand, for the aggressive strategy, we uh, trust more in, in the limits. So for example, if the application has some peaks, then uh, the limits will absorb that peaks, and we are saving money with that. But your application might run uh, out of, of resource in that case. Okay. Uh, so let's get started with the right size strategies. But first, why are we doing this? What are the key benefits that, that have right size in your request? Well, first of all, you, you'll have a better understanding of your application. You'll understand how your application performs and what, what your application can do in the cluster. Also, you might discover some issues that your application have related to uh, performance that you didn't know because your application was running with a lot of resources available. So maybe your application have some peaks of usage because of a misconfiguration or a software problem. And now that you have limited the, the request, you'll see it so you can fix it. Also, you'll make uh, the most of the resources because maybe you're sharing your cluster with another team. And maybe you're, if you start right-sizing your workloads, the team, the other team, will have more room for their applications. And of course, you'll save money. That's, that's obvious, because you'll be uh, buying less resources for your applications. So we have a plan here. Uh, first, 
we need to monitor. This is the core thing we are, we are going to do today. This is the most important thing that you need to, to do with your applications. Monitor them. You need to monitor a cluster, you need to monitor your application. Then you need to know what are the, the requests that you have to set. You have to discover this. Then we'll do this resize, right? We will perform the resize. But then you need to monitor it again because right sizing your request isn't something that you do once. This is, this is something you, you have to do quite regularly because your application is a living thing. So maybe today is one number, but tomorrow or the next month is another number because usage can vary. So please monitor your applications. We can tweak it and then we back to four. Four is monitoring. So, so we need to monitor. What, what are we going to use here? Of course, Prometheus. We love Prometheus. Prometheus is a de facto standard for monitoring Kubernetes. We all use Prometheus, I guess. Uh, so what information are we going to retrieve from Prometheus? First, we need to know what is happening inside the containers. We need to know how many resources are your containers using right now. And for that, we are going to use the C advisor exporter. But also we need to do, we need to know what happens inside Kubernetes. We need to know how we configure it, how, what are the requests and limits that we set up. So we need the Cube State Metrics exporter, KSM, for getting that information from Kubernetes. So how we, how can we detect unused resources? So in order to calculate the percentage of an used memory, we can create this, uh, we can use that math. We can uh, get the memory request minus the memory usage and all of that divided by the request. So that will be the total uh, percentage of memory and use. And if we see that in a real scenario, we can use that query that it's uh, doing the same thing, but with the, without the percentage. So we are getting the request minus the memory. I think in that query, it's upside down, but uh, doesn't matter. And uh, we can get what are the workloads that are and use more memory. OK. So what if instead of using, uh, if instead of aggregating by uh, by workload, namespace, and, and cluster. What if we upgrade this just by namespace? Then we might are we are might creating the kubectl blame command because this is like a picture of what are the teams or the projects that are wasting more resources. I'm just kidding. Don't, don't do this because you don't <laughs> want to fight anyone. Okay. So we monitor. We we have a lot of information. How do we use this information? Now, the next step was to calculate uh, the, the, the request. So there are two ways of doing this. The first one is the conservative way, the conservative strategy. This is using the max, this is ca calculating the max number of resources that your application is using, and that's your request. This has some benefits and some drawbacks. The benefits is that you will be full of room for your application. The drawbacks is you might be wasting some money anyway. Because what if your application has peaks of usage? If, you're, if you set the, the, maxim, the request as the max, there will be some, some peaks that, 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 that you'll be paying for, but you won't be using when your application isn't in one of, the, of, of those peaks. But this could be an, a, a, a nicer starting point for a start to tweaking, because there is not a formula. The, the, you, the, there, there's some, some trying here. So what, there is another strategy, may, may, maybe a, a more aggressive one. Yeah, you can use a more an aggressive strategy that is calculating the average of the uh, consumption of your application. And that way, your application might use some peaks of memory, but that's OK. The limits are there, so the limits absorb that uh, peak. And if you need to tweak it out, so you have to increase, that's OK, because it's a living thing, as you say. So we can increase it Okay. In we need it. So, but, so let's first recite the application that we saw before. 
in the previous slide. We are going to halve the request, the memory, and the CPU, and let's see how that's the impact. Let's check the impact. Okay, let's check the impact. Yeah. In that panel, we can see the unused memory of your application. What is the amount of unused memory? We can see that now we are wasting less resources. And in that one, we can see the percentage of the resources, the memory, uh, versus the request. So now we have increased the percentage of the, of the memory that we are using. So we are fine, but we are not in, in our final so point. So it was a good starting point, right? Now we are wasting less resources, which is nice. But we have some room for, for improvement here. Let's, we monitor it again, and we, we could tweak it again. So what if we halve it again? We go from... 512 to 256. What happens? Let's check the impact. So in this screenshot, in, the, in this chart, uh, we, we went even farther. We, we went from two, 2056 to 128. And this is uh, like, like all the process. When we requested one gigabyte, uh, we were using 20% of the resources, which means that we were paying for 100%, but we were only using 20. Now we, that we uh, said 128, we are using above, above uh, 100% because we have the limits there. So, and this is where we want to be. We want to use all the resources that we are reserving because that way we won't be uh, wasting any resources or any money. This is the same image, but the other way around. This is the quantity of resources that were wasted we went from a lot of percent to almost zero or even zero uh, after, after setting uh, to 128. So this is it, right? This is, uh, this is what we wanted. This, now we, have, uh, we, we aren't wasting any resource. So we are happy, right? Well, well, well. No? We have to, to talk about the real thing here. Real thing, OK. Yeah, we have to talk about the money. Everyone likes money. Right. Well, I do. <laughs> so let's see how much. Let's see how much we are uh, paying uh, before the right sizing. So in in that we were paying like one hundred uh, dollars per month for the request, and after right sizing we were paying twenty five dollars per month. So there is an improvement here. So we improved it in seven, seventy-five uh, dollars per month. And just yes. with one workload. Yeah, we did only one port. And imagine a, what imagine. we could do. If we do that in the entire cluster, we could save a lot of money. Okay. So what are the conclusions here? Uh, we learned that our application was lighter than we thought. We, we thought it was a more complex application, and, and it runs with less resources. We also saved $75 a month for just one workload, which is great. But the most important thing from my perspective is that we are starting a workflow that is easily repeatable to monitor the resource usage. We created some dashboards, depending on its use case with those queries with those metrics, we, we, you can create different dashboards, but you can have all the information there, living there, so you can use that same dashboard for all your workloads. So you can take a look from time to time and see if your cluster needs some right sizing. So this will help you to keep keeping your applications uh, like in shape. So that's all that we wanted to show you guys today. Thanks for listening. And Any questions? Have you ever been in a situation where a workload uses a lot more resources at the beginning, but then goes down? Like, how would you set resource and limits in that situation? Okay. Yeah. 
Uh, the, the, the question is, what happens if the workload uses a lot of resources at first, but then it lowers it? Uh, can we manage this situation? Yeah, that's uh, why we do an average for over time. So you, do, you don't have to take, and even if you use uh, a lot of resources at first, that's why the, the limits are. So the limits will be absorbed that uh, amount. So you have to uh, assure the limits. In that case, the, the problem is the limits. So we have to put the limits there. You know what are the peak. So then you have to request about that. So you know after that, you know the average of, of your application, right? So that problem is solved in the future, not in the beginning. In the beginning, the problem is the limit. You have to put uh, the limit yeah. right. And, and this is something you are doing regularly, so they, it will be fixed after a few uh, time monitoring. So, yeah. Yep. Excuse me? You got me? Okay. Hey, uh, here I am. Um, do you think the amount of money spent and man hours spent on resizing is always less than money saved after resizing? Excuse me, can, can you repeat? The amount of money and the man hours spent on resizing work is always less than the money we save after resizing the workloads. Uh, you mean uh, what happens if, if you need like more, like you need to spend more money? What? No, I'm saying, you know, you spend, you know, resizing each workload is a lot of work, right? So yeah. you need a lot of man hours for, you know, doing that. Do you think that will actually uh, benefiting uh, after the money, you see the savings after resi resizing? You see what my question is? Do you want to put that question, Patrick, for me? Excuse me? So if it takes you a, so if it takes you a week of work Sorry, to... Sorry, I'm not an native speaker. Yeah, so if it takes you a week of work to save ah. 100 bucks, but your, week, yeah, but your salary uh, is higher? Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, sorry. The question is, uh, what, what if we are, you are saving a lot of uh, money, but you are spending a lot of time, a lot of effort, right? Yes. Red sizing. Okay. Yeah, that, this is a good question. Uh, as, as we said, uh, we worked in this dashboard once, and then we are using it for all the, dashboards, for all the workloads. So yes, at first, it's some, you, you need to be some time uh, writing queries and knowing how your applications work. But once you have this, you can replicate this anytime. So, well, it depends on, on your use case, but I think it's, it's worth it. Thank you. You mentioned, you mentioned uh, on, uh, when, you, when you kind of go back and you do it again, you're kind of operating at 100%, right? Or at 100% of the resource. Is that kind of misleading to your uh, developers and they think, oh, I'm, I'm not at the edge. Should it be more of a sweet spot where it's, you know, maybe it's running at 80 to 90%? Yeah, that's a really nice question. Thank you. The question is, if we are reaching 100% of our resources, that could be uh, misleading to our developers. That they, would, they might think 85% is better. Yeah. The application never uh, working like uh, in a stable. It probably are like that. So yeah, there is like a, a range, like 19% uh, or uh, 110 percent. So that is the the sweet spot. Yeah, like, the, the thing is, you have the limits there. Yeah, the limits so, are for that. Yeah. So you using 100 percent, it's a good idea because you are taking the best of your requests. And if there is something that makes your application go even further, you have the limits to cover that, to absorb that. And of course, if that go even further and you have memory issues, uh, as you are monitoring this, you'll know this and you, you'll be able to fix it. So yes, that's a good question because at first I was thinking the same. So I have 100%. This is uh, way in the edge, but no, no, no. It's, it's, it's because you have the limits for that. Thank you. Hi. Actually, my question is related to the same question he asked. So I got something like a five, six different environments, and each environment I got like probably 
more than 100 applications running. If someone is an SRE, if he's sitting around and thinking that, okay, I've said quite a lot of money by tweaking my apps and I go to bed and then my ports get evicted. So I have to make a decision like, do I make my life easy or do I save money or just vice versa? I think this problem had been going on for a while. I think there is, it's, it's still a bit of a, like a firefighting kind of like a manual approach. It starts well. And at one point, you can just give up. Like someone said that uh, initially ports are fine, then eventually load goes up, then you constantly have to keep a watch on where the metrics, where the load is flowing through. It might become a bit quite a cumbersome job to constantly have to tweak your apps. And then if you have hundreds, more than 100 applications, and then each has got, and I've got four or five environments, where do I go? Uh, Thank you. Excuse me, can, can, you, repeat the, the the question. No, can I, you repeat the question again? So what is the question? Uh, I, I don't hear it. I, I, the microphone, I think, is, is a little bit low. It's, it's not actually a question. It's like a, it's a little bit difficult to actually... It's good to start with this kind of right-sizing, but if you have, say, 100 workloads, 100 applications, yeah. and I got four to five different environments, that means four times 100, 400, how can I maintain this thing? It starts off from the beginning, and over so, a period, okay. it keeps changing. Yeah. The, the question is, what happens when you have a lot of nodes, a lot, lot, lot of mm, clusters? Uh, how can you uh, manage all this work? Yeah, the thing is, in, in the graph we saw, we can uh, prioritize, because we know what are the uh, worst applications, like the applications that are uh, wasting more. So you can focus in that, and then you can improve it, and you can yeah. Continue with that. Yeah, it depends. It, it's it's the, the, the other, this other person asks something like, is it worth it? Well, you can start with, with what are, what's the namespace that is wasting more resources. You can start there. And you don't, you don't need to do it uh, at, in one night. So, yes, uh, it depends on, 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 any, on each scenario. Uh, you, you went over that slide with like the guaranteed burstable and best effort. Yes. Um, but like a different scenario that wasn't up there was what if you set um, your requests but don't set limits? Like, is there any scenarios that you would advise doing that, or have you ever seen that being done? If you said you 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 say if you if we set requests but no limits, what will it be? Uh, yeah, will, he, will he he's asking. Uh, in in what place will be if re you're related to? This is not working. Okay. If you if you request if you put a request but no limits will be burstable. It's considered burstable. Yeah. Burstable. Yeah. Is there it's any not scenarios? Best of any scenarios where you would? Does that because make sense? Because if you or? yeah if you don't set the the limit it's like the limits it's like if you put limits very higher like it's like no limits for Kubernetes so it will be the burstable. Yeah, I was just curious if, like, is there any scenarios where that makes sense? Like, you gave, like, an example in the previous slide of, like, database or API gateway. Uh, Sorry, can you repeat? Is there any scenario where that would, that would make sense to not set limits? Or is it always or not advised? set limits. Well, yes. Uh, it depends on, on, on uh, the use case. Yes. Yeah, if you have... Every... The, sorry, the question was if, if it makes sense in any X scenario to not, not setting the limits. Yeah, if you if you have an idealist scenario where all application can down can be down or can be, uh, can be evicted uh, without any problem, yeah, you can put no limits. So uh, every application that needs that CPU will re will receive the the CPU. That is for CPU mainly, not for memory. For memory, it's not not yeah. but. For CPU, yeah, and sometimes it's it's but it depends of all uh, teams or of your class because sometimes you have uh, a lot of teams that don't talk each other. And yeah. <laughs> you don't trust yeah. in in the other True. team, so take care about that because maybe that team is disturbing. But if if you monitor your application, you, you yeah, can yeah. you can answer your own question in 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 that scenario. You can you can know what what is happening. So I would go without limits and let and do some and, and try it. Yeah. But that, this is for CPU. Yeah. Only for CPU. Yeah. So, um, 
my question is similar to what you were just saying about the limits. Um, how do you handle a case where you're, you're almost at 100%, but the, your traffic is very burstable and you need a little bit of overhead at short periods of time? Sorry, I'm I don't sorry. know where you are. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. Ah, sorry. sorry. I was looking at the end of the room. Sorry. That, sorry. That's okay. can, 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 Just can, how can, do you can. handle burstable network traffic where, you know, a little bit of peaking, you want to be able to grow, otherwise you're going to run out of memory and your node's going to die or your pod's going to die and then it gets worse and worse and worse. So Does that make what, sense? What is the question? What, sorry. Uh, do you mean when what, what happens if we go above that 100 percent yeah for, for a period of time yeah but it's not a problem if you but 100 percent of the request pressure the request right it's not problem because for that is the limit the limit is for that so if you yeah if if there's a problem if you go above your 100 percent of your of your of request, the limit of the request and you have problems with that you should set the limit yeah because you might need to tweak the limit a bit uh, if you need a warranted uh, state, you might want to uh, to increase both limits and requests. But but as, uh, it depends on any scenario. Sorry, because there's no formula for this. But but if you monitor this, uh, you you could have some some answers. Uh, so first of all, really great talk. I really like how systematic your approach is for this sort of uh, inefficiency and problem. Um, but the, the question I have is that the system you have, it involves like, a, like an iteration on like kind of manually changing the limits and requests. And I was wondering if you have any knowledge of any kind of automation to do that so that rather than a human having to like keep pushing commits to like tweak the numbers of the limits and requests that like you have like some an operator that would go in and mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, dynamically change it based off of uh, the Prometheus metrics that it's getting. Yeah. The question he asked is, is there any automated way of doing, this, of doing this instead of being manually tweaking the queries and, and the limits and the requests? Uh, like, this is a very tough question yeah. because you need, this is a very craftsman operation because it's a scenario, it's application. Even even two, two teams could be using Nginx and yeah, the and limits and requests of each team could be completely different. And maybe it's happening like the first uh, uh, question that in the beginning you have a peak, very big peak, and if you do it that automatically, maybe you are missing it. So uh, I, I'd go, for, for example, if you go to the SysDIC booth in, in, uh, in the, in the, in the, here in the salon, uh, you, can, you can see how uh, SysDIC, for example, do this. Uh, we, we have this thing called um, the, uh, Kubernetes dashboards that, that, that give you this information and can help you finding what, without you doing a thing, uh, finding uh, what's the right request, the right limit. But like, but, it, I don't think there is an algorithm that you could deploy yeah. in your cluster. And I, Yeah, that is not. Yeah, I, I get it. We we have we had a few formulas. We have an average and max, and we saw we said that the, that that was a starting point. So, at first you don't you you have nothing with the first formula. You have something, so you could automate the average formula. The max is the most. Yes. Uh, sorry, you should you could automate sorry the the, the conservative strategy, which is the max. Yeah. Uh, and it would also last longer because like it wouldn't be 
Yeah, I I wish I had like a yeah. better answer for for you, but but yes, it's it's quite it's quite like that. It's you you. Yeah. Yeah. But development might be a good use case for it. What, what's, the, what's the cool part? Uh, what do you call it? Hard auto scaler? Sure. It's like a regular auto oh, scaler. So it has, it comes in two modes, like on okay. and, and forward. All that is just like checking and restoration the resources. Yeah, you, you, you could use, for example, Kira. Uh, no, sorry. Uh, no, because uh, that's that would be with the with a VPA. Yeah, we, we could yeah we could use uh, the Kubernetes VPA for right sizing the limits on the requests, but no. that but that won't be very like that won't be the most efficient way of doing this because you'll have some. But yes, you you, you can try like the the good thing about this is is the numbers are in Prometheus, so just just take a look. Okay, this I think we are. Uh, okay, thanks for thanks for joining us today. Have a nice day.